What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Zoe with No Days Off DFS here to bring you guys some WNBA props for today's three game WNBA slate. Going to be looking over here on Prize Picks, which seems to be everyone's favorite site to play props on. But if you guys don't have a Prize Picks account, you want one, make sure you guys check the link down in the description below so you guys can go ahead and get a deposit match bonus and join your boy over here on Prize Picks. Now, you don't have to just play all these prop plays on Prize, you can play it on the books, FanDuel, DraftKings, Chalkboard, uh, Pick Six for DraftKings, and also as well on Underdog. So, Make sure you line shot for some of these lines because, of course, as the day goes on, stuff moves around. Now, last week, we hit a pretty good stride in regards to the plays that we we're putting out um, over here on the channel. Going to start a whole new streak this week. Hopefully, we can go ahead and continue the hot streak that we have been on. Definitely going to be putting out only my favorite plays over here and give you guys some analysis on other uh, leans and plays that you can actually take. Maybe you have some questions in regards to a play that you were looking at yourself and just need a little bit more insight on it. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the content, make sure you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content I am putting out over here on the channel. And drop a like on this video if this video or any of my other videos have helped you guys win some money. Now, uh, if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, I have been posting some some um, free plays up over there. I already had dropped a couple of my favorite lines that I liked last night. I was up, of course, because I was at work. But I was up, and I went ahead dug into the slate and found a lot of the plays that I liked. As soon as I hit the board, went ahead and jumped on them before some line movement came out. And I posted those not only up on Twitter, which is free. But I also dropped them on the Patreon. And if you guys are looking for uh, that stuff right there, the link for that is down in the description below as well. You're not only going to get my stuff, but you're going to get my boy Jay. And you're also going to get my boy BK, who is the founder of the No Days Off. Uh, if you guys are looking for that, make sure you guys check the link for that down in the description below. So heading over here to the slate. Like I said, this is a really nice slate. Uh, as always, starting with the popular tab, we have a couple of plays up here that I really do actually like for today. Um, Tina Charles, we already know she's the primary big out over there, that nine and a half rebound line. Of course, we can all take, go ahead and take that six and a half. That's pretty much safety. And that's, uh, uh, honestly, going up against Andy, she should be able to smack this with the minutes that she's been playing over these last several games. This, uh, this right here kind of is a no-brainer. If I wanted to build, go ahead and bankroll build over here, uh, going up against the uh, Indiana Fever. Just looking at the last couple of games that she has played since coming back from the All-Star break and, and since Cheyenne Parker has been down. She's gone out there, seven rebounds, 15, 17, 13. Now, of course, yes, she can go out here and she could crush this 11 and a half demon or just a regular nine and a half line, but we could just go ahead and take that safety at the six and a half rebound line. Now, it's not an official uh, play, not one of my main stable plays that I want to harp on, but uh, just going over this this tab over here, got to go ahead and talk about it. Uh, some other plays over here that piques the interest that we can go ahead and take. Sabrina Linescu, the six uh, rebound line. Of course, if they ever, um, if they offer back up her goblin play, uh, that's a no brainer. She has cleared that line in pretty much every game going up against the uh, Phoenix Mercury. Uh, they do give up quite a bit of rebounds to opposing guards. Aaliyah Boston, that 10 rebound line, that looks good. Ryan Howard going up against the Indiana Fever, uh, 17 and a half points. That should be a easy no-brainer for her right there on the day for that one. Um, Alyssa Smith, some unders on her again today look pretty good. But um, And then, of course, uh, Jordan Canada. If you were able to get her last night, which I posted this up on Twitter, she was uh, in the power two that I posted, but they had her at six assist. She's been bumped up to six and a half. Yes, she can go out here and get that, uh, but she's clear six assists since the All-Star break. Uh, well, she's either hit. Or going over the, the six assists since the all start break. So definitely uh some some value that we were able to snack last night if you were able to get that. All right, first play on the board for me. That's gonna be going over to my girl Shakira Austin. Now she has a ton of lines up here that I actually do like. Love her fantasy point line at the 28. That should honestly be uh to me, because of course they shipped out uh Misha Heinz Allen. She has cleared this in every single game since come back from the all-star break. 30, 35, 38, and 40, and most recently going up against the Seattle. Um, storm 38.5 fantasy points in that game and she's doing this playing at least 25 minutes a game now if they actually increase her minutes up hopefully we can actually get that for her one of these days where she will actually go out here and be able to play closer to 30 minutes this should be a no-brainer she's given it to us on the defensive side she has definitely been a main focal point between her and Brittany Sykes out there the usage has been through the roof for her um, so far with her being out there on the corner. It's just love. Now, I know she has a questionable tag right now for the day, but fully do expect for her to play. She is quote unquote listed as probable right now in the one game, of course, that they only play going up against them. Yes, she dropped uh, the 39 point, um, the 38 fantasy points, which she is averaging roughly about 39 ish fantasy points uh, going up against Seattle, quote unquote, because they've only played one game so far. But the other numbers that I really do actually like for her, um, and this goes into some of the other props that we can actually alt and take some of her, her goblin plays, the nine and a half points. If you watch the care play, you see that she's getting fouled a ton. She also gets to the line. But again, like I said, she's a main focal point. She has cleared this line right here continuously, uh, of course, except for in that first game going against the Minnesota Lynx. It's the Minnesota Lynx. Tough defensive team. I'm not going to fault her for not being able to get that. But she made uh, amends to it and cleared it the second time that they played. Uh, right now, going up against Seattle, she dropped 24 points in that first game that they did play going up against them. And then, of course, um, on the season, in her away game, she is averaging 11 points on the road. So I don't mind that 9.5 goblin play right there for, for her right there. Then also the rebound prop, the rebounding. She has been gobbling 
gobbling up rebounds left and right. She's averaging seven, uh, seven close to eight rebounds a game right now on the road. And of course, in that one game going up against Seattle, she had nine rebounds in a game. That five and a half rebound line, love the over for that right there. I definitely would uh, would take that if I was looking at anything to take. Now, some more riskier plays that you can look for. Shakira Austin, that three and a half um, free throw made line, she does get fouled quite a bit. She had 10 free throws made in that game going up against Seattle. If you know anything about Ezzy, you know NECA, you know that uh, she can definitely draw some fouls going up against them because Ezzy goes for everything that she can try to get to a block. And NECA, she is still a great defender, but just a step too slow for the athleticism that Shakira Austin has when she is out there on the court. All in all, main play for me over here is going to be the Goblin plays for Shakira Austin. Love that five and a half rebound play and also the nine and a half uh, points. Both of those would be the main plays that I do want to take over here. And then, of course, the lean plays, the, the ones that we can go ahead and take at regular lines would be the three and a half free throws made and then the 28 fantasy points score for her. Now, another play that is a play that we can actually go to, and I believe both of these players will be able to carry their weight uh, when it comes down to it. And that's going to be Ezzy and Shakira Austin for their, um, their rebound line uh, right here. That combo is sitting at 16. In the game, last game that they went out here, which was the only game that Shakira has played uh, going up against Washington together, as he had 14 rebounds in that game. Shakira, as we already had stated in that game, she went out there, she had nine. That's a no-brainer, easy day for them both to be able to clear. Ezzy, she's been on, on a rest, been on a break, and right now, uh, whenever they've had a ton of games off, Ezzy has come back and she has rebounded very well in all games, having double-digit rebounds in every single game. So I'm not going to expect too much for this uh, prop right here to be able to be carried. Both players should be able to do their part, and I love the over for both of these right here. This is another official play for me on the day. Next play for me, we're going to go over to everyone's favorite darling, the Rookie of the Year, which is going to be Caitlin Clark. Now, um, I know... Going up against Atlanta last time, Atlanta, they do a pretty good job in regards to defending the guard. But this Indiana Fever team has looked completely different since coming from the All-Star break. They're looking pretty good in regards to actually following the offense. We're seeing Caitlin. She looks very comfortable out there. The um the combo between her and Aaliyah Boston is looking very good out there, especially with the addition of pieces. Fag Banley coming back as well. Uh, they're looking good. And this game is very important for both these teams in regards for their playoff push. We know Indy, they're trying to make the playoffs. They're looking like they might actually do it. Uh, with that being said, on the back of Caitlin Clark, what she's doing out there is looking amazing. Now, I know we can go ahead and look at props like her nine and a half um, assist line. That's definitely a lean for me. I'm not too comfortable in regards to taking it because Atlanta does limit assists to opposing guards, especially with the uh, defense of Canada being out there. She's actually pretty good on the defensive side. Ryan Howard and Alicia Gray, they are pretty good defenders. Um, and I do expect for Caitlin to see at least a, a couple of traps. But then again, Tanisha Wright is the coach and there's no telling what she is going to scheme up. Now, I will say looking at her, um, I definitely do like some interest in the five and a half turnovers. She's cleared it the last time going up against Minnesota, who is a good defensive team. With the way that Canada can actually play in the passing lanes, uh, be all up in your grill, and definitely just the crazy passes that Caitlin takes, that five and a half turnovers does look very enticing. But I will say, since the All-Star break, the one that I really do have interest in, and that's going to be Caitlin Clark for these field goals attempted. She's attempting shots. She's looking like the 1A that she was meant to be when she was coming over here. Uh, as you can see, 18, 19, 16 shot attempts in her last three games since the All-Star break. And I don't think that's going to stop uh, here today. I do think that she's going to go out here and she's going to take quite a bit of shots. Again, especially if she's feeling it, if she's able to actually get the ball to go in the hoop. And she's out there getting 23, 23, 29 points in these games. They're going to need Caitlin to actually play very good, like what she has been over these last several games. And I do think the upside will be there for her to go ahead and get those shots off, especially just looking at how the offense is actually flowing and moving now. Um, it's, that all-star break just did wonders for them in, in order for, for what I got. That all-star and Olympic break just, I, I said it <clears throat> multiple times, especially in my DFS breakdowns, that once they came back from the break, it was not going to help anyone more than Caitlin Clark for what she was going to be able to come back and do in the second half of the season. It literally was like a complete off season for her just to have that almost a month off right there. And we're, we're seeing it. It's paying dividends. Now, uh, the 16 field goals attempts, that is going to be the official play over here for me for her. And then, uh, of course, you can look at the 22 points. I don't mind that as a possible lean play. I'm not too strong on that. If I had a goblin, if they gave it to us at like a 19 or 18 points, I would definitely take that right there. I do have some interest in this demon, though, that four and a half, three points made. If she can go out there and bang those threes, that would definitely be amazing. If she can actually go out there and do that, I do like the upside possibly for that. And then I would take a slight lean on this 15 and a half assist. We would need Caitlin to carry this assist combo because I do have faith that Canada, she'll go out there, she'll get me at least six, maybe can push for seven assists. Caitlin just has to be able to go out here and get the eight to nine assists that she can actually get herself. But that combo, that could be another one that you can look to. I do like the upside. Just got to hope that Caitlin is going to be able to go ahead and get those assists that she should be able to have.
Next play is going to be going over to the old GOAT, DT herself. Thanks, Rossi. There's a couple of plays that we can actually play for DT. There's two and a half assists line, the Goblin. That, to me, kind of just looks really free, uh, if I'm being very honest. She's cleared this in five of the last five games. Um, playing at home where she is averaging three uh, three assists a game and currently averaging three assists going up against the New York Liberty as well. Don't mind taking the two and a half assists right there. But the main line that I want to get to DT, that's going to be those points. She's averaging 20 points at home and 16 and a half points going up against New York Liberty on the season. Uh, one thing for sure, DT, when she's off of rest and she is playing uh, at home and the, the focal point of the offense sometimes has to pass through her. She's going to go out there and she's going to score. She's going to do what she does. Uh, one of the weak things that we always go ahead and we attack whenever it comes down to playing against New York Liberty, that's opposing guards going up against them. She's not going to have to worry about that Benajah Lightning defense, that um, the, the, the hard defense that she might have of Kayla Thornton whenever she comes off the bench or Feebich out there. That should be focused on to Kalia Copper, who should be the main focal point in regards to, to having to deal with the defense. DT, she should be dealing with that Sabrina. She should be dealing with the Courtney Van Sloot and definitely has been cooking them over the last couple of games. And so far in the two matchups going up against them this season, she has been cooking them already. Uh, last game when she played going up against New York, she went out there. She had 19 points in that game. And then uh, the game prior before that, she went out there and she had 14. So she hooked in that, that uh, the, the first game, but uh, definitely cleared it in the second game. Now, one of the things that you can do, you can, of course, see if they give us the goblin play. I wouldn't mind taking that if they give it to us, like maybe at 10 and a half or something like that. I would actually take the over on that. But that 14 and a half uh, points, I do have some enticing. I do actually like the over for that. That's going to be one of the official plays I look to for today. All right, sticking with the assist over here, the last play I'm going to give you guys, that's going to be going over to Skylar Diggins-Smith. That four and a half goblin that we can go ahead and get for her, she has been clearing this continuously uh, since coming back from the All-Star break. She is literally averaging right now, sitting at those five assists uh, for her. Hopefully, she can go out here and get us a little bit more assists, maybe with the time off, especially with the addition of Gabby Williams coming over to the squad. The cutting that Gabby will actually uh, bring to the team. She's not going to take too many uh, crazy offensive um, possessions away from some of these other players. Yes, Gabby can go ahead and just rock, but understand, no, Gabby that we saw in the Olympics is not going to be the same Gabby that we're going to see over here playing for the Storm. She is going to be just a little bit different over here for them, and I definitely do think that having another player who is pretty reliable, cutting to the rim, uh, going downhill, will definitely pay dividends for Skylar in getting those assists. Not to mention already, when you have uh, plays out there like Ezzy, NECA, and if Jewel Lloyd can ever just remember how to shoot, those assist numbers should be qu quite easy for Skylar to go ahead and get. But the four and a half assists, like the over for that for Skylar Dingus Smith. That's going to do it for my fish plays that I got for today. If you guys got any props that you want to question about, talk to me down in the comment section in regards to it. Let me know what is your favorite prop that you guys got that you guys are looking at for today. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy the content. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Good luck to everybody. Hopefully, I see all you guys cashing out in a ton of green slips in not only the Discord, but over on Twitter. Peace.